One of the big issues with ergonomics is that people go online seeking information about what to do. And very often they will arrive at the website of a famous clinic or doctor, and they will be advising people to sit in quote ergonomic chairs and they'll have other ergonomic advice as well. But we've discussed the problems with ergonomic chairs, which puts you in 90, 90, 90 sitting. It's that angle of spine, leg, lower leg. And here to talk about the problems with this kind of seating is our personal seating guru, Dr. Turner Osler. So welcome back to the show, Dr. Osler. Nice what to be back. Tell us what you think doctors should know about so-called ergonomics. Well, actually seating in general, but sitting at a computer. Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, the thing that would be most important for doctors to know is that they should be very humble about what they know because mostly they don't know anything. I went to medical school and none of this came up, frankly. Um, I had to basically teach myself this topic um, by reading the world literature and talking to um, ergonomists and uh, physiotherapists and martial artists and you know people who are interested in posture and how the human body works in practice. Physicians study disease and try and uh, you know try and remedy a problem that walks into their office. The business about how to live best is something that um, physicians come to lately, if at all. It wasn't always thus. Um, early physicians, you know, Hippocrates famously, and, and, and those before him as well, you know, were full of very good advice. You know, walking is man's best medicine. Uh, food should be your medicine. You know, these very basic ideas about how to, um, how to uh, live well so that um, you don't have health consequences. Modern medicine is really focused on, you know, is it the LAD that needs the stent kind of fix the heart sort of stuff. And so uh, physicians in general haven't been very well schooled in how to um, optimize health. They're more about trying to cure disease. Um, and so when physicians are asked these sorts of questions because um, you know, their training doesn't really cover it, often they just take the off the shelf kind of answer that you'll find in you know, a, a book on ergonomics, um, which has been uh, you know, vetted by ergonomists. Uh, and leave which it at by the way, are not trained medical doctors. Right. Um, uh, and the ergonomists who write the standards for furniture is basically a self-appointed committee. Um, you know, there's the, the, the business of finding authority is not so easy in this world because there really isn't a established authority. I mean, if you have diabetes, you know, we have people who know a lot about diabetes and spent their whole life studying it and can be a big help to you. But if your question is, you know, how should I sit in a chair? You know, the, the physician crowd hasn't spent any time on this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's not an easy question to study. And secondly, no one will pay you to do this kind of work. Um, you know, you, you get paid for dealing with, you know, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis or a gunshot wound to the abdomen, but the business of talking to people about how to uh, avoid um, back pain from sitting all day pretty much doesn't come up. Um, so, and the ergonomists are not really in your corner either. They, the whole science of ergonomists was worked out to make people more effective as cogs in the manufacturing process. You know, they wanted to be sure the worker bees had good lighting and handy tools and, you know, didn't have stuff fall on their foot so that they could like keep working um, and crank out more widgets. But it wasn't really about making your workforce healthier or stronger or happier. It was about um, optimizing production. So, you know, the whole, the whole background of ergonomics is a little, uh, it's, it's more um, for the company than for the worker. So we don't really have good standards for this kind of thing, and we're only gradually inventing them. But there is one thing that I've noticed speaking with doctors. 
a lot of them are really aware of anthropology and they talk about things like hunkering or squatting that was pre-chair this is an absolutely excellent thing it's a brilliant facility for any human to be able to have to do a squat but Un unfortunately most westerners can no longer squat children can squat but uh, as soon as we put them in chairs at school, they lose that ability because their hamstrings shorten and, and really they lose the core musculature that's necessary to squat. Interestingly, um, squatting is a big piece of hunter-gatherer uh, uh, culture because when it's been studied um, in the Hadza in Tanzania, um, it turns out that hunter-gatherers spend as much time resting as any Manhattanite in their office chair. The difference is the Hadza have no possessions. They only have tools that they can carry with them, you know, spears and, and that sort of thing. Um, so when they adopt a restful position, they squat and they're quite comfortable squatting for hours at a time. When it's been studied though, when you put uh, electrodes on the Hadza and measure their metabolic rate, squatting is actually quite an active thing to be doing. Their muscles are still working because they're balancing over their ankles. So they, when a Manhattanite is in his cubicle slumped, all of his muscles go dark and his metabolic rate plunges, his bad cholesterol goes up, his good cholesterol goes down, his insulin goes up, all these, all these biochemical markers go to hell. When the Hadza squats, his muscles are still working and so his biochemistry stays excellent. And so the Hadza don't have heart disease and they don't have obesity and they don't have diabetes. So, you know, we've, and, but what's fascinating is that when they studied the Hadza, they found in order to get them to come to the lab, all they had to do was put out some chairs and they were all over. They loved sitting and squatting and relaxing, you know, because, you know, they're as corruptible as anybody. They just hadn't invented the chair. And we'd seen this movie before because the Hadza were introduced to tobacco about 100 years ago and became voracious smokers and now have empathy and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, the diseases of modernity, they were protected as long as they were in the hinterlands. But as modernity hunted them down, so to say, um, you know, they proved as vulnerable as the rest of us but they still are a window on what life could be. And that is that if people moved when uh, quiet by squatting and having the muscular activity that's involved in that or finding some way to sit actively, the, 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 the really dreadful health consequences of sitting can be minimized or eliminated. So it seems to me, Dr. Osler, that if we can encapsulate this, there would be two things, don't sit. <laughs> if you do have to sit, sit actively and fidget or march your feet or do whatever and get up out of your chair as often as possible. How does that it, sound first? No, that, that, that's, that sounds about right. Um, and, and pretty much telling people not to sit in the modern Western world is, is a non-starter. You can't even look out the window unless you are at chair height. You know, the whole built environment assumes that you are in a chair. You can't go to a restaurant. If you if you go to a restaurant and say to the maitre d', I refuse to sit in your death trap. Yeah. You know, they'll look at you a little oddly and 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 hand you your coat, you know, because uh, you know, they, they they got other people who are perfectly happy to sit down and behave like normal people. So, you can't get away without sitting in the western world. Um, as an epidemiologist, you know, we understand that. We know that you can't berate people or belittle them or argue them into behaving better. You have to change their environment to keep them safer. I just thought of something better. Sit on the, if you must sit, sit on the edge of your chair. Mm -hmm. They say that the only good portion of your chair is the first three inches. Mm -hmm. So that way you do have some ability to shift from sitting bone to sitting bone. To and and forward and back. back and if you, and, and if you delicate. and if you get this and if you get that front edge of your chair up high enough that you have an open hip Higher. angle with your knee lower than your hip, yeah, you know you, you you have a survivable solution. You know you can get through the day like that, and you know if and, and you'll find that it's work, and you may after you know twenty minutes or thirty minutes or an hour find that you just have to slump and recuperate from the immense effort of actually sitting the way your spine wishes you to sit. 
But with practice, you can sit like that all day. I can. I mean, I am very, I can't sit using a backrest. It makes me extremely uncomfortable, but I'm, a, I'm not the usual person. But I think that we've nailed it here. Three things, sit as little as possible. When you do sit, sit actively and sit on the edge of your chair so that you can be active right. and have yes. your hips higher than your knees. Mm -hmm. I think that would probably be really good advice for any doctor to know. To, and then we can talk about the other problems with 90, right. 90 sitting else. Time, and, the, and the problems. business of encapsulating this kind of thing turns out to be crucial. I have quoted uh, Pollen's uh, three laws of diet many times. Um, eat food, not too much, mostly vegetables. And now you don't have to read his very good book because that's really all you need to know. Although eat food has to be unpacked a little bit. When he says eat food, he means something your great grandmother would recognize as food. You know, fruit roll-ups, they would not recognize as food. That's just too, that's not, that's not food. That's, it looks like packaging material you know? or Fruit Loops. That is not food. That, that also not looks happy. like packaging material. You know? <laughs> Thank you so much for enlightening us about sitting and helping doctors understand what they need to know. And it's so great to have this voice of reason and, you know, honoring the internal ergonomics, the, the spine and the bones as king. Well, the idea, the idea that we're going to tell doctor something brings up one of my favorite jokes, which is you can always tell a doctor. You can't tell them much, but you can always <laughs> tell a doctor. I love that. You can always tell a doctor. You just can't tell them very much because <laughs> they think they know everything. So, uh, so really, you know, be alert that you, just because someone is a physician does not mean they will necessarily be able to give you good advice. And this is coming from a physician. So maybe this advice is suspect. Well, I think it's good advice. And I'm comfortable passing it along to our viewers. So thank you, Dr. Osler, so much for coming onto the show. We just really enjoy having you. It's always such a pleasure. And we will see you next time. Looking forward to it.